Well, I just did a grocery shop in Costco, but they have the new Pelican Mission in there. I was looking at it a little bit. I put all my stuff in the car, and then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go take some shots and video of this boat and talk through what you get. So here's the issue. You're in Costco because you're gonna get a good deal on eggs, milk, and some chicken. And then you come across stuff that you really don't know anything about. For example, I wanted to buy these monkey trees because they're awesome and I'd love to have one in my house, but I'm sure some horticulturalist would tell me like, oh, they do it all wrong, the soil's all wrong, that thing's not gonna flourish, and these are the problems you're gonna have. In paddle sports, I'm kind of that guy. I've been doing this since I was 16. I'm 45. I'm gonna go look at the boat behind these trees and uh, try to tell you what's great about it, what might not be, and what to look for. Here we go. Well, the first thing you're gonna see here is that these boats are designed to fit in a box well. And that's so, of course, they can ship to a box store. And there's nothing wrong with it. And the good news is your boat's gonna be protected. Bad news is boats that are designed to fit in a box generally have a pretty flat profile and most importantly super flat on the bottom right here so they try to give it shape and they give it this little keel here right in the middle for tracking and then a more concavity and then a hard edge there all those edges and keels they're not for performance they are for structural integrity so the boat doesn't waffle because it is such thin plastic Okay, I feel a little bad picking on that shape. Here you can see their diagram where one, two, and three are three points of stability. Uh, you know, you could do that with just a shallow arch. There is some reinforcement going on. Does that little keel line, number two, give you more tracking? And does the indentations help trap water to give more tracking? Probably a little bit, but I just point out, you're not seeing this shape in high-end sea kayaks and high-end canoes. It's also there to provide structural integrity to the kayak. We've seen the industry try to use these clips. They break. They will always break. So here you have a hole, and my only concern here is if the bungee were to break or pull through, how are you going to get it back in there? All right, here was a drain plug on one of the boats. This thing, you know, you could you lose. It's just plastic in there. But interestingly, this one did not close at all. A couple of the other ones did, but it's just kind of a funky mechanism that I think you're going to have issues with later. The threaded ones are better. Okay, I'm picking on it, but with that tight, sharp plastic right there, I'm a little concerned using these handles as bow and stern lines. This is a nice feature for an inexpensive kayak. This sliding knee or thigh brace is going to make your ride a little bit more comfortable, though the front of the cockpit is still sharp. This kayak is not that deep, so this front of the cockpit right here, you're going to want to watch your shins on this part right here. This is about as basic as you can get a paddle. It's just a crimped aluminum ferrule that's kind of loose, so it'll work fine. The combing will not hold the skirt. They're forming this boat from a flat sheet, and you're not going to be able to get a tight, aggressive bite of a spray skirt there. And that same thing happens with this cup holder here. So I like the long padded supportive seat, but they're not able to form this with a right angle. It always has to bevel away. And so you're just not going to get a good grab around any beverage. Maybe a water bottle kind of would hold in there, but nothing really tight or anything heavy. You gotta hand it to them for them giving you a paddle holder right here, but again, that clip, loading this in and out of a truck or back of a car or on top of a car is gonna be a problem. There's your tank well. I like the little shock cord uh, nets. Like I told you earlier, that issue, there's a drain plug that did work fine. I think this self-draining uh, plug will probably work okay, but something to keep an eye on. There's three of them that are all good. There is this forward deck tray that you can actually put a uh, cover on that they have. The beverage holder will be an issue. They're showing that cover in position. That's not gonna be a waterproof bag. Uh, you know, overall, again, this is a recreational boat really for shoreline use. I do not wanna see these out in open salt water or making big crossings. It's a 10 foot long boat with no built-in flotation, 29 inches wide, 25 inches at the cockpit width, a 53 inch long cockpit, but this number right here, 300 pounds, that's a bit deceiving. You're just not gonna fit a 300 pound paddler in this boat. I think even at, you know, if you have a cyclist thighs, it's going to be tight on that. And over a 210 pound paddler, and you know, the boat is gonna really 
uh, have some more stability issues. So, you know, kids, smaller paddlers, great, but if you are broader shouldered or larger, you're gonna have a tighter fit and just a hard time controlling movement underneath you of this boat, which is a big deal when a kayak doesn't have built-in flotation. But again, you're gonna have a ton of fun in this kayak if it's just for recreational use. The blade is a fiberglass reinforced, probably nylon or polypropylene, does include this car carrier, but they have a little bit of a miss here by only giving you one cam strap and then two bow and stern lines. I would buy an extra cam strap so you can have two over the hull. And then there's that dash cover with bungee cord. Just kind of, that's a little knickknack that I don't really see a lot of value in. Again, the 300 pound rating. This was where just trying to show you kind of how a size nine and a half shoe fits in here. You're gonna be a lot better wearing water socks or something that gives, um, you know, more room. The further down you get with your shoe, it's gonna really get tight. And then my finger spread here is about nine inches, eight and a half, nine inches. I put my shoe up here to kind of show that's a nine and a half. So, you know, you could kind of measure, approximate your thighs under there. It's gonna be tight if you have larger thighs. Well, I didn't buy the Mission 100, but if you own one, please share your thoughts on it in the comments. And if you have any videos, you send them to me. I'll actually re-edit this video and throw those in and uh, share your comments and thoughts for people. Um, the reason I didn't buy that is because for a recreational boat, I was able to find a kayak like this. This is a Walden Vista. It's made out of recycled plastic, and I found it online this fall for $75. So that leaves me now a fair amount of resources to buy a really nice paddle and some other uh, like life jacket and some other maybe possible flotation to make this a little bit safer in deeper water. So that's another route to go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful if you are in the market for a new recreational kayak. It's all great as long as you're out paddling, being safe and smiling. And so if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.